Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Wilson, and thank you for joining us for A New Way to Museum. So I'm the paleontologist here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. And though I study ancient marine ecosystems back 85 million years ago when Kansas was covered by an ocean, my first love was actually sharks. So it's pretty fitting. So I grew up going to the beach with my family and collecting sharks' teeth, and that's what really brought in my interest to science, um, which took me to marine biology and then eventually took me to paleontology. Paleontology. So I am going to talk about the types of sharks that we have in Kansas. So what's really cool about where the Sternberg Museum is in Kansas and even the idea that 80 to 100 million years ago Kansas was covered by an ocean. That means that we can go out to the outcrops um, where rocks are exposed in the western part of the state and there's a really good chance of finding shark's teeth. So sharks are a type of fish, but they're different from the fish that, you know, we may eat the salmon and the trout that we eat for dinner or the bass and the brim that we go fishing for um, because those fish make their skeletons out of bone. Sharks, on the other hand, make their skeletons out of cartilage. So cartilage is a soft, flexible tissue like what makes up the tip of an, our nose or our ears. So it makes sharks really powerful and flexible and agile, but from a paleontology perspective, it just doesn't fossilize well. Um, it just doesn't have enough um, minerals in it, so we don't find too many of the internal skeleton of a shark in the fossil record. For the most part, what we find for sharks are teeth. So paleontologists who study sharks have to kind of approach things in a little bit different way, and they're still um, kind of, of ancient life detectives, but they're only able to decipher what an animal looked like, what it ate, how it functioned in its ecosystems with its surroundings by teeth only. So what we do when we find sharks is there are a couple of different ways that we can study them, um, really like any other fossils that we find. And we look at the shape and the size. We try to figure out how those teeth would fit together in the jaw. And then we also do a lot of comparisons to modern animals and, and living sharks to understand how the shape or the size of a tooth relates to whether um, that shark was catching fish, whether they were catching maybe skates and rays on the seafloor, whether they were eating a lot of already dead animals, so like carrion, um, or whether they were active predators after, after larger prey or smaller prey. And so we can look at some of the teeth that we have have um, in, in deposits from Kansas. So most of what we have out here, with the exception of things like Megalodon, which is everybody's favorite, but most of what we have out here are shark's teeth that can be found in the Western Interior Seaway deposits of Kansas, so the ocean that covered Kansas 80 to 100 million years ago. And we can start to see the diversity of sharks that we had in that ocean. That we have um, sharks with these big pointed teeth that were going to be great for ripping off chunks of flesh after larger animal, off of larger animals. But then we also have very specialized sharks, like one called Tychotus, which is one of my favorites. And they have these um, almost little mushroom shaped teeth. Um, and we have a good idea of how they fit in the jaw, but instead of having sharp points and maybe serrated uh, crowns, you know, like we'd see in a steak knife for ripping, they have these flat teeth that were used for crushing. So these are special sharks that we think were actually crushing clam shells and hard shelled animals that lived on the bottom of the seafloor. Um, and that's how they got their food. So very different than what we think about with our traditional um, image of a shark, whether it's a great white or a tiger shark or something like that. So we can start putting together how sharks fit in these ecosystems. As we have fish predators, maybe we have ones that were eating a lot of um, turtles or seabirds or whatever is around, kind of like our tiger sharks do today. Um, and then we have these specialized crushing sharks that probably spend a lot more time on the seafloor than they did up in the main part of the water column. And then every once in a while, we get this really exceptional preservation. So we have a fantastic specimen on exhibit at the Sternberg Museum in our chalk bed gallery that actually gives us a more complete image 
of what a shark called Crotoxyrhina looked like than we normally do. So while we normally just get teeth, this shark is extremely special because we not only get the teeth, but we get the teeth in a position that shows exactly how they would have been growing out of the cartilage making up the jaw. And then we can follow the skull down the, the, um, to where the central part of the body was and we actually get some of the denticles. So those are the scales of the shark. Um, so if you've ever had the chance to, to touch a shark, if you go nose to tail, it's very smooth. If you go tail to nose, it's like sandpaper because they have these little denticles, these little hooked scales that make up um, the outside that are embedded in the skin. So we have some preservation of that, but then we actually have all of the vertebrae, so the entire vertebral column that gives us a better idea of what the size of the shark was. So now we can relate the size and shape of the teeth to the size and the shape of the animal and get a, a more complete picture and that helps us make other interpretations, especially for specimens where we don't have as much preserved, as much skeletal um, as, as many fossils preserved and skeletal elements preserved. So sharks are a very important part of these ancient marine ecosystems, just like they're a very important part of our modern marine ecosystems. They fill lots of roles, whether it's scavenging, whether it's predating, what, pre, uh, predation, whether it's bottom feeding. Um, and there's a lot that we can learn from looking from the past to the present as well as the present to the past with lots of comparisons about how ecosystems have changed over time as well as how the individual animals have changed over time. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about sharks today. Remember to like the videos, follow us on social media, and post any questions you have in the comments. Thanks for joining us today for A New Way to Museum. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.